You are watching McLaren Port here on today's health program, and we are talking with Dr. Karen McFarlane about obesity and health risks in women. So, Dr. McFarlane, we talked a little bit about diet. So, but um, can we talk a little bit about how obesity is treated? Absolutely. So, usually, we always try to do non-surgery options. That non-surgery option actually is a segue into weight loss surgery because usually it's a requirement that you've tried something in the past. So how does bariatric surgery help someone lose weight? The key word for anything, especially when it deals with obesity, is called sustainability. There are many people who we've seen try to do either diet and exercise on their own. It's extremely popular. We have um, People Magazine, usually in January, um, segues into people who's done well on their own. You have your, your um, biggest loser. But the main thing is, when you see people a year or two out, weight gain is a very common feature. So again, sustainability is the key. So when we talk about bariatric surgery, I know there's some criteria. So Absolutely. who would be eligible for bariatric surgery? So part of that really comes down to, well, a large portion of that really comes down to insurance requirements. And the number one you have to meet is what we call BMI requirements, your body mass index. At minimum, it's a BMI of 35. So that's roughly equivalent to maybe um, 50 to 80 pounds overweight, depending on, on your height. Um, next is also includes um, understanding the risk you're about to get into. You have to demonstrate that you've tried weight loss options. Of course, there are medications like Adipex, Fenfen, you name it. Um, and not to mention there are other smaller criteria, uh, which includes no psychological conditions that are untreated. Depression is a really big portion as to why people will experience weight gain. Because mm -hmm. I would imagine this is, um, it's, I've heard you say it's a tool. Absolutely. Ba bariatric surgery is just another tool that, that can help the patient. Most of the problem that we have is behaviors. If I can hypnotize people, I would. But behaviors is one of the biggest challenges, regardless whether you do it on your own or have weight loss surgery. So what types of weight loss surgery options are available here at McLaren Port Huron? We, we have three main types. That includes the adjustable gastric band, otherwise known as the lap band in the past. We also have, uh, very, most popular is a sleeve gastrectomy. And then we have an alternative, which is the gastric bypass. And so um, some of these procedures are done laparoscopically, correct? Actually, thank God for technology, all of them are done laparoscopically. It's very unusual to do open surgery now. And so what are, would be the benefits of having it done laparoscopically versus open? Well, procedure? for example, laparoscopic surgery, most of the time people could usually go home, let's say overnight, um, if it's a sleeve, if it's a band, you go home the same day. Bypass nowadays, we now have a tool we call robotic surgery, and we are seeing people go home indistinguishable at the same time, which is usually the next day. So it's going home quicker, quicker recovery, less blood loss, less pain, and plus it looks better. You don't have as much incisions in your belly. That sounds great. Um, so you talked a little bit about the lap band or the gastric band. Can you explain what that is? Oh, well, the, the reason we can't use lap band anymore because the company has now um, been absorbed. Um, so we do have, let me show you a diagram. So the band really is a plastic apparatus. It's made of silastic band or silicone, very similar to silicone implants, if you will. And we place this belt, if you will, right on the very top portion of the stomach. The idea is it's supposed to control your appetite or your sensation of feeling full. The way we do that is attached to a long tubing that gets right underneath your skin. So this port, if you will, feels like the, the back of your knuckle. And that's what we as physicians f use to be able to access the port, place fluid, and then adjust the band such that you have a smaller s pouch and food goes in much slower. We actually have an animation that we can go over as well. Okay, <clears throat> so usually when we start, we start with small incisions. Those small incisions are roughly about as wide as your index finger nail. We use adapters called ports to be able to access into your body. Okay, our physical hands are not in your body. It's actually instruments roughly the length of this pointer. As we use those apparatus or the ports, we focus on the very top of the stomach. We distinguish between the esophagus and the stomach. And this band, we slide into the actual port and buckle at the very top. Now, normally, food would go very easily into the stomach, uh, from the esophagus into the stomach. But now with the band, you see food will slowly trickle in. And that's how the band works. 
So what are the pros and cons of this type of procedure? Uh, the main thing is we have to make sure that you don't have certain disorders beforehand. That includes severe heartburn, reflux or indigestion. There's a potential to make this worse. Uh, number two, and more importantly, there are some people who have an adverse reaction to silicone. We saw that 15 years ago with women with breast implants. So if you have a personal family history of lupus, we have to be very cautious because we can actually make your symptoms worse. We do need to take a break, but this has been really great information, and so we will continue this discussion when we return in just a moment. Thank you.